Hi again. I've uh, talked before about uh, how much I enjoy the genre of uh, espionage fiction. And in fact, I've just previously reviewed John le Carre's latest book. Um, and a book which was published in 1974, and I read um, shortly after it was published, uh, Six Days of the Condor, um, really has become a classic in uh, the genre. Uh, and it was written by um, James Grady, and it, it really has a, an intriguing premise. Uh, <clears throat> the hero, Ronald Malcolm, works for the American Literary Historical Society, which is a front organization for the CIA. And it's got um, a, a building, uh, a discreet building, a, 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 an old house really in, in a, a street in DC where it operates from with a plaque outside, etc. And what it does has a staff who comb the works of uh, fiction, spy fiction, for any tidbits that could be of use to the training and the operations, operational life of agents, and also for any potential leaks. So uh, he nips out for a sandwich, and when he comes back, um, everybody in the building has been massacred been shot and uh, he goes on the run and uh, contacts he has a contact number at headquarters and his code name is Condor and uh, he contacts them um, and as the plot develops he realizes that uh, he can't trust them and he ends up kidnapping uh, a woman so he, he can have access to somewhere to stay off the grid and also a vehicle. And then um, by using the trade craft that he's gleaned from all these books that he, he's had to um, analyze, he um, manages to outwit the people who's up against him, uncover the plot, which is corruption and drug smuggling within the agency, uh, and um, uh, come out a winner. A uh, very well-written book and um, very well drawn characters and as I say it's quite an intriguing plot so the book was successful and it was turned into a major movie uh, starring Robert Redford uh, with Faye Dunaway as the woman he kidnapped and uh, it, it was pretty faithful to the book I'd say uh, more or less um, in some ways, uh, the star really, in my view anyway, was Max von Sydow, who um, portrays Hubert, who is the assassin. And he, he's a world-weary assassin who, um, later on in the movie, um, actually gives um, Malcolm some life-saving advice and kind of really... Um, uh, tells him what the world he's entered is really about and it's like and, and how it, it operates and it was fantastic portrayal and it's quite an iconic uh, role uh, then more recently it was made into a TV series which ran so far for two, two seasons um, they changed the plot quite somewhat um, but the, the basic premise is still there uh, and it was quite a big budget uh, TV series with high production values and they turned the uh, Huber assassin character into a female and it's very well portrayed and um, I, I found it good uh, I really enjoyed the TV series both series and uh, so uh, there's quite a you know, quite a lot being built on, on the original book. Anyway, um, since the book was published, an, another edition came out where uh, James Grady went into uh, explaining how he 
uh, came up with the idea. He, he worked as an intern <coughs> in, um, for a senator. So he, he did understand uh, Washington uh, politics and, and the, the Washington scene to an extent. And he, there was a, a house back where he was from Montana, which was the American Historical Society. And this house, we never ever saw anyone go in and out of this house. And he just idly one day thought, well, what if it was some sort of front organization? And then almost at the same time, he had this notion, what if you came back from lunch to find everybody in the place you worked had been massacred? And he put the two things together to start the, the whole idea of the story. Um, some of his influences um, that, that he read included <clears throat> the... Um, Richard Condon's The Manchurian Candidate, which was a terrific book. Um, I read a lot of Richard Condon's stuff back in the day. I don't think a lot of it's in print now, although I'm sure you can still get it from Amazon. But he, he wrote some, some magnificent books. And, and it just reminded me, I'll, I'll have to review a couple of them. Um, and the other one was The Kremlin Letter by Noel Bain. Uh, which was another book, I've reviewed that one. And so he, he cites quite a few of his sources. He, he he's a, At the time, obviously James Bond, particularly with the movies, was big, but he, he liked Bond, but he didn't want to write a Bond character. So, uh, you know, he, he's more of a, a guy who um, is more cerebral rather than physical. Um, th then the interesting thing is after the movie, uh, apparently the KGB said why aren't we doing this and they set up a department which, which had several hundred people working for it where they reviewed books and did what the American Literary Historical Society was doing in the fictional book so um, you know truth is stranger than fiction in some ways so there you have it um, it's certainly a book I, I enjoyed. I enjoyed the movie and I enjoyed the TV series. So um, r really, you know, it's gone across um, several different um, media and uh, has been a winner in all of them.